It's glad to have everybody join us this evening and this morning. For those of you who are joining from overseas, the, the Bible tells us, these are record to mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, for his compassion fell not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give to you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Let's bow our heads as we ask God to sanctify our time together. Holy God, we approach your throne with gratitude in our hearts recognizing that you are the awesome God of the universe. And beside you, there is no other God. You reign and you reign supreme and you reign on high. As your children, we have gathered around the table, your table, to feed on your word, the word of life. And so, Father, we ask that you will open our eyes through the ministry of your Holy Spirit, that whatever we will communicate this moment will be a source of blessing edification of our souls, that in the end, it will bring glory to your holy name. This is my prayer in Christ's name. Amen. We have been working on the book of Revelation, the most powerful book. And uh, John had the honor to bring this book to, uh, had the honor of Bring, bringing the other end of the Bible, two ends, Genesis, Revelation, the other end, thereby bringing Revelation to completion. The revelation of God ended in Revelation itself. No other revelation. We are not waiting for any revelation. God has finished, and that is the end of the story. He has finished speaking with us directly. He speaks to us through his word. And that doesn't mean God doesn't lead us. He does lead us. He, he has various ways he can lead a child of God. But every leading must be, uh, must correspond with the scripture. God cannot lead you contrary to what is in the scripture. And we also have to be very careful. Sometimes I'm not even careful using the word God leading us. We can only rely on the scripture. And this, uh, uh, most of you already know, and uh, those of you who don't know, I will be leaving for Africa tomorrow, God willing to serve him in other part of the world. And I can see from uh, my brother Joe, who is coordinating that uh, the excitement is, is very high. And the uh, people have been praying for this open door that we will be able to bring the truth to them. And we don't know what we have until we don't have it anymore. There are people who are so hungry for the truth, so hungry. And that's my fuel that keeps me going to all these parts of the world. I just can, I still remember vividly as if, as if, if uh, it occurred yesterday when a group of people, uh, I don't probably about 20 or more of them walked for 40 miles to come to a conference, 40 miles. When they arrived, my host pointed those group to me and asked me, can you, would you mind going to greet them? They just arrived, having left at midnight so that they could arrive on time, 40 miles on foot. And a whole day program and they had to walk back 40 miles home. And that's, <laughs> honestly speaking, 
those people will be a challenge in the internal state. And, and I don't know what reason we have why we cannot make ourselves available to the teaching of the word of God. And of course, those of us who tuned in at this hour, I'm preaching to the choir. It, it doesn't concern you. But other people have other things more important to them. And again, it's a matter between the individual and the Lord. Uh, this evening, we, like I said, we have been working on the book of Revelation. And we just concluded uh, the sixth trumpet. Uh, and uh, there is a pause before we get to the seventh, seventh trumpet, which, is, which is, would be the most fiercest display of God's wrath on the planet Earth. And each time we have seen the pattern, each time there were, there, 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 we will see a pause. When the first seal, the, the, the sixth seal to the seventh seal, there was a pause and, and God just took a break. It's like a hold off, hold off. Don't go yet, don't do that. God being patient. And we, we, also, we also saw the angel when he, when he, when uh, after the fifth, the angel screaming, whoa, 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 to the people living on earth. In other words, it's going to be very catastrophic for those people who will be left behind after the rapture. And, the, uh, and as we have seen so far, it has been very, the revelation, uh, tribulation is very progressive. It starts mild and then it intensifies as the, as the latter part, God does pour his wrath on the, on the planet earth. And those who live, who are left behind will, will take part in drinking from the cup of God's wrath. My friend, it's, it's going to be horrible. If, if the rapture were to take place now, tribulation will begin right away. And the rapture could take place anytime. There is no prophecy to be fulfilled before the rapture will take place. No prophecy. And people who try to tell you that there, this prophecy will be fulfilled and that prophecy will be fulfilled, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, prophecy, uh, rapture is imminent. Imminent means it can happen anytime with no sign. And uh, even Jesus himself in his human nature doesn't even know the hour. How then do we think we mortal men, how do we think we can know or dictate and predict the hour? No one can predict the time of the rapture. It can take place while we're sleeping. And the saints, those who we are in Christ will be removed from this planet Earth. Those under the ground, of course, when I mean under the ground, only their bodies are under the ground, in the grave. They are the real, when a, a believer dies, the real person goes straight to the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we see, before we go today, we're gonna to have, uh, I'm gonna give us a time for Q&A, &A, question and answer, so that we can, uh, I wanna pause alongside with where the John himself paused. It's a good, perfect place to pause. It's like I didn't plan it to pause, but that's where my next teaching does pause. So it's a it's good fitting to pause while I'm taking my trip tomorrow. So pause with me. When I return, we will continue to see why we have this pause. And so as we, uh, what we're looking at here is uh, this, this uh, some hours ago, I was reflecting on God's, God's dealing with mankind, how God deals with us. God is merciful and gracious. He deals with us in that mode. 
and man, we have been called as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to represent Christ on this planet Earth. And God has done two things to make this uh, universal for all believers. The two things he did was uh, we, uh, we are first, he gave us, God gave us uh, uh, the privilege of being a priest. We are all priests. Never forget that. A priest represents himself before God and man. And we are, there is no male priest and then no female priest. Every believer is a priest, which means you have the privilege of representing yourself before God. And secondly, he gave us the office of ambassadorship. You an ambassador. Ambassador, ambassador represents a country in a foreign country. You and I, we are in a foreign country in the devil's world. We are representing the kingdom of heaven. And we are, we are already citizens. By the way, you are already a citizen. There will be no application for citizenship because you're already a citizen. And that's what Paul tells us in Philippians 3 verse 20. You're already a citizen. And so as an ambassador, it is your job to, to kind of present your country to the country that you have been sent to represent. Your job is to bring everything, let you that country know all the good things about your country. It's kind of a marketing, if you, if you want to use that word. So you and I, we have been left here on earth to market heaven on earth, to let the unsaved know about the kingdom of heaven. That's our job. And if we are not fulfilling this job, it doesn't go well in the history of mankind. It has never gone well. I'm a living testimony. It has never gone well. When God appoints you to do his work and you fail to do it, he, he will come on you heavily. Uh, let me not to go too far. We saw it with, with Jonah. God asked Jonah to do something. Jonah refused to take the gospel to Nineveh. And God came heavily on him. And it was not a joke. Jonah felt the hand of God. That was Jonah. Now, but about the nation Israel, the nation Israel, the, the, the people of Israel were called to magnify the glory of God to the world. They refused. And thus they were suspended. In their suspension, God through Moses in Deuteronomy 28, told them that they will suffer. They will suffer, and they are still suffering. Wherever you find a Jew today is under that paragraph of discipline. Thousands of years gone by, they are still suffering because God already de decreed that they will suffer because of their spiritual failure to take the gospel to nations. And the seven years is the tribulation left for them to finish that assignment they have for God. And it's going to be horrible. Even for evangelists, they, are, they will minister in a very uh, unpeculiar period of human history. And so that's, I'm showing you what can happen when we are not taking our assignment seriously. That also happened to the church. The church Jesus said, you receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Then you will be my witnesses, beginning from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to other parts of the world. They received the powers promised, and they didn't go anywhere. In Acts chapter 8, God engineered persecution, and great persecution came upon the church, and everybody started running, and it drove them out of the city. As they ran, they began to preach. You see? God doesn't sit when we, why? Why is it? Because the pain of the lake of fire is not something worth even teaching on all. 
It's not what it's not what is costing the pain, the agony. That's forever. It's not one thousand years. Some people teach that uh, uh, purgatory. You get up. God will make you suffer for a little while, and then He will bring you out and transfer you to heaven. That is teaching that you cannot find in the Bible. Jesus Himself said that they will burn forever. Unless somebody will tell me that forever means tempera, convince me from the Greek or from any language you want that forever doesn't mean everlasting. Jesus said it point blank. And John, in when we get the revelation, said the same thing. He said that the, the, the worm and everything there uh, will not die. If worms don't die, how do you think that humans in the lake of fire will die. And so God is doing everything to lure people out of this place. And that is part of tribulation, as we have seen so far. God's tribulation is not merely to punish people. That's part of it because the Jews fell. But tribulation is to induce people to turn to Christ. And many will turn to Christ, and still many will not turn to Christ. And so at, in the end, God can say to you, or say to those people, I have done everything. Point to me where I failed. I gave you my son. I brought in this pressure to force you to change your heart, to change your mind, and you refused. The lake of fire becomes your share, not because I have no compassion, rather because you rejected my grace and mercy. And so with that in mind, my friend, uh, let's not take witnessing lightly. Uh, as individual, collectively, as a group, as a nation, wherever you find yourself, take witnessing seriously. It's, it's a mandate given to the church. Go and make disciples of all nations. It's not, it's, it's not some, it's not a, uh, the Lord is not asking us, would you mind to go? It's not uh, optional, it's a command, go. And when we don't do it, we are violating the mandate of our Lord Jesus Christ. With that said, I want to leave the uh, floor open for anyone who may have a question on what we have been studying in the book of Revelation. If you do, just unmute yourself and then uh, ask your question when you finish. You can mute yourself back. Any questions so far? And uh, then uh, we will go into uh, a prayer uh, tonight. Uh, we will uh, have uh, four people selected to lead us in prayer as a group. Uh, and by the way, I know everybody is preparing for Christmas. It's a good time to prepare and remember, as, you, as we remember, we remember our Lord Jesus Christ every day, but more so, at this time people tend to spend more time in focusing. But as you shop, don't forget the real reason for Christmas, Jesus is central to Christmas. Uh, don't shop him out of your basket. Okay. Hey, Shalom. Yes. For the people on Facebook, there's a couple of people watching live on Facebook, so they can't answer questions, but I told them if they have a question, type it in the area, I'll see it, and then once there's a spot, I'll let you know that someone has a question. Very good. Thank you. Question, question. The book of Revelation, the church, remember the church is removed after chapter three of the book of Revelation. The first three chapters present the church. And after the church is removed, tribulation, after the church is removed at the rapture, tribulation takes place. Question. Uh, 
Everybody silent. I have a As question to Cheryl Mosby. Okay, okay. So if you're a believer and you're not raptured up and you are left during the tribulation, how long will you have, how long will it be that you will endure all of the hardship? If you, you mean if you're a believer before, if you're a believer, you will not, if you're truly a believer, that's, let, let me put it this way, because there are many people today in churches that are not really born again. Uh, they, they, they have been baptized, they go to church, they participate in uh, all church activities, they sing in choir, but they're not truly born again. But no true born again believer who has personally trusted in Christ to grant him or her internal life will be left behind. So no believer will be left behind. All believers, those who did and those who live in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 uh, through 16, they will all, they, all believers will be raptured out. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 1, 10 said that we are not meant for wrath. In other words, the church, the believers, the we are not designed to face the wrath of God. God will remove us first before the wrath comes upon them. But the, the believers, the believers that will be, that uh, see after the church is removed, the war, it, you will have the world with unbelievers, all of all unbelievers, except those two, 144,000 evangelists that the Lord raised. And this 144,000 would evangelize, bringing many more to God's kingdom. Those people who have believed in Christ during the time of tribulation, they will suffer. Some of them will die in their faith. Uh, that's uh, we see, we already saw uh, those people crying in our study, Lord, how long, how long will you uh, not avenge uh, our avengers? So we don't know how long they will be before they are removed, whether they die or whatever, but they will still be in here on earth. But those who died during that time, uh, they will also be uh, among those, of course, if you die, you are no longer on earth. You don't know what is happening anymore. And so the first thing is that no believer will be left behind. Then those who become believers during tribulation through the evangelism of, the, of those great evangelists, the Jews evangelists, 144,000 of them, those who become believers will suffer. Some of them will be killed for their faith. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. Thank you for your question. More questions? Bring whatever, any area you are confused about the future. The eschatology. This is the teachings about the future. Hey, Shalom, in, in the, I think it was two lessons ago, you had a reference in regards to Hebrews 12, 10. And as I was writing it down, then someone came in the room and I forgot to, I asked you about this and it's just, but we were in Re Revelation chapter eight and we were uh, between one and three and you mentioned the reference about Hebrews 12, 10, okay. which was referring to the last part of it, that we may share in his holiness. I think there was another word, a, a Greek word, something that you mentioned about that. And I, 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 was, I didn't catch it the first time. 
Hebrews what now? 12.10. Hebrews 12.10. Okay, okay, so I'm sorry, what's your question there? Well, you we were in Revelation 8. Okay. And I think you were either but one, two, or three, and then you mentioned there was a reference that you mentioned uh in regard and my question was I just didn't really understand what it meant that we may share his holiness. I mean, we're supposed to be holy because he is holy. Right. 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 But here, because of discipline for a short time, and I wasn't sure if that was referring, if this was during the tribulation or this was, because obviously we're not, when, when it's not, when the tribulation, we're good. But that you made a reference and I should have wrote it down. Like you know, I couldn't remember. Okay. Okay. But maybe you might need to maybe go back and either. Uh, Listen to back to the message, or okay, or, or get me what exactly. But the the Hebrews, of course, Hebrews. My reference to the Hebrew book of Hebrews, uh, discipline or suffering is is meant is for all time, be it in tribulation or at the present time. God disciplines us. It's kind of purification. He uses discipline to set us on the right track to participate, to be in the, in the mode or in, in, in the setting whereby we share in God's holiness. Uh, and uh, God uses every means to bring us about to is kind of uh, uh, getting a gold, the, the, the nod of a gold, the nugget, you put it in, uh, in the burn, in the in the furnace, and to burn off everything that doesn't belong to the purity of that gold. So God does use discipline to bring to bring the whatever that is necessary in us, so that we can serve Him. And now that you just mentioned it, another passage that came to my mind is the is Malachi, Malachi chapter three. In Malachi 3, Malachi spoke similar uh, how God purifies us. Malachi 3, verse 3, he says, And he will sit as a smelter and purify, uh, as a smelter and a purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. Oh. And, and so often pride gets in our way and all the things that get in our way of truly being the priest that God would have us be. So he will use every means he will use whatever is available to his sovereignty to rid us all the chaffs, all the things, all the debris that will prevent us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ from fully participating in the work that he has assigned to us. Um, if pride is on the way, he will bring pressure and he will make sure that when he's finished with us, we will, we will be as humble as we can be. Did I touch it a little? Exactly. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you for your question. I'm listening more questions. Anything that is you are, it's not uh, clear to you where we have studied so far. Revelation chapter 1 through chapter 9. 
We are almost halfway gone. This book of Revelation, very exciting book. The more I study, the more I can see why God attaches special blessing to those who study this book and those who obey what it is, what it is in it thereof. There are something, many things in this book that are meant for us to obey right now. That's why God puts blessing to those who obey it. Uh, well, obey what? There is something in the book of Revelation. Uh, so far, I have been edified myself, just studying and uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to throw a beam of light on his word. So exciting. And it's, the more we go, it's, it's going to be even more exciting as we see the plan of God unfold. As, as we see the unfolding, the para, paranomic view of the word of God. By the time of revelation, by the time we finish, you will see everything will now make sense to you from Genesis to Revelation, that nobody can deceive you from anywhere about the future. That is the purpose of this study in the book of Revelation. Questions? Questions, questions? Uh, and of course, I also appreciate that uh, a good number of people do ask me, have been asking questions from overseas. And uh, I have a sister in the UK. She is just almost every lesson she would uh, have uh, throw in her question or comment. Very encouraging and uh, other others who are doing the same. So if you don't have too many questions to ask, it's understandable that uh, you are really the Holy Spirit is really taking you through the lesson or lessons. Any hey, question? If okay. somebody if somebody has a question after and they they they're watching the videos and they find this video later and right. they have questions, what's the best way to get those to you? Uh, uh, they they can uh, Maybe, how do they normally, is that post it back to Facebook or how do they? It can, yes, but but we normally, um, the, the messages in, in Bethlehem Missionary Churches, uh, right. it's there, it's not answered. Okay, okay. Well, I, I think, uh, yeah. look into it and see how we can uh, abstract their questions back so that okay. we can uh, answer them. Okay. Th th thank you. Any other question? We see we have other other group tuning from Facebook who are being fed through the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit. No, no question. Just uh, I will uh, encourage us as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ before we go into prayer to stay focused. Don't be distracted. Uh, like uh, Paul said, we are closer to eternity than when we first begun. We are marching forward, not backwards. Uh, and uh, every day is not a plus. Every day is a minus to the timetable of God. And so let us remain steadfast in our walk. Let us not be bogged down by the things of this world, by the politics of this world. We have different politics. It doesn't mean we don't tune in into the world. We are part of the, we are in the world, but not part of the world. And so let's stay focused. We have a job to do. And it will not be to our advantage as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. if after we have done the work here on earth, we are disqualified for the prize. We would have lived a wasted life. Far be it from me that I will live a wasted life. What have I gained here on earth if my life is tagged waste, wasted life? And so don't live a wasted life. 
live a life that will count for eternity. We all have homes, and our homes is in internal state as believers. Uh, while we decorate here, let's decorate the internal place where we will spend in all eternity with God. And so let's, like Jesus would told us, would, would, would say to us in Matthew, let us build, uh, let us make investment where moth does not go, where there cannot be a rusting. Let us put everything where it will count for eternity. And then let's continue to pursue righteousness with that which no eye wish see God. Pursue righteousness doesn't mean if you're not righteous, of course, righteousness by faith alone in Christ alone guarantees internal relationship with the Father. And nothing can break that relationship. But the righteousness that the author of Hebrews talks about to pursue righteousness, it is spiritual righteousness. It is the righteousness that we acquire every day as we live our spiritual life. If you break that, you will break fellowship with God and their eyes, God's eyes will be turned away from you. That's what the author of Hebrew is saying. It's not, we, don't, we can't pursue righteousness for salvation. It is a gift. For the gift of God is internal life. Romans chapter six, the gift of God is internal life. And Paul said that I may have his righteousness Philippians 3, 9. Not my righteousness, but the righteousness that comes through faith. And faith has nothing to do with works. Faith stands alone. Faith has no bearing to anything we can do as God's children. And so as we continue to pursue spiritual integrity and spiritual righteousness, may we continue to look to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us to his utmost presence with great joy. And to him alone, we stand for all eternity, glory, majesty, dominion, authority from now and forevermore. And so let's continue to embrace the teaching of his word. Dive into it like the people of the old. There is there is spiritual power and blessing that come from swimming in the pool of the word of God. Nothing is like it. Your whole life encompasses the word. Moses said in Deuteronomy, it is your life. So let us not play with our life. Now we go to thank you for tuning in. And continue to pray, pray for my trip, that it will bring glory and honor to God alone. And I pray for protection continually until we return. And, and uh, our brother, Brother Ojo, will be uh, leading while I'm gone. So that even if it is prayer, you will continue to tune in until I return. Let's go to prayer now, and I will have, like I said, I have four people. I appointed four people to pray this hour. And so let's join hands with them as they lift us in prayer. I'm going to call first person, would be my dearest uh, sister, Debbie, to pray for my trip and the conference in uh, Abuja and then uh, in the village that God will use this time to draw many to his kingdom and to open the eyes of many to his truth. That we will have lovers of his truth who will take the truth to others and to their churches. Dear Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for this time together, together, how great we, grateful we are 
to be in service to the one true living God. How grateful we are for your word uh, that you have left with us so that we don't have to walk wander around wondering what to do, that you've left us the instruction manual for our existence. Uh, we thank you for Moses and for his heart to always go wherever you open a door. And we thank you for bringing him into uh, back to cross paths many years later with his friend Joseph and for Joseph's uh, kicking off and taking this huge bull by the horns there to organize this program and open the office and so many other things that go all along with that. But you have united these uh, two men for a great purpose and we uh, recognize this as an answer to prayer. For years we've been praying, 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 praying for uh for Africa, particularly for Nigeria. We know that if Nigeria changes, it can change Africa. And we've been praying for uh, a way to get the word to people. And it looks like uh, the timing of so many things is coming together. Uh, we do pray for the conference. Uh, we pray for its great success. We know that Satan would love to throw monkey wrenches into it. So we pray for every aspect. There's so many things that have got to come together. We pray for the filming. We pray for the feeding of the people. We pray for the messages, the lessons, the sound equipment, um, all the moving to and fro, people coming from many places to get there and then having to move from their accommodations to uh, the, the church. Um, we just pray that you superintend every single aspect of that so that it can go off so that many people uh, can learn. We pray that those who are sitting there thinking, should I go? Should I not go? What should I do? That you would tug at their hearts and that you would draw them in. Uh, we pray for all the newly elected board of directors for GEM Africa. And we pray that you would strengthen each and every one of them uh, and give them the insight and the dedication to help carry this message far and wide. Uh, we are also, Father, thank so thankful for uh, the GEM Africa website and for Patrick. Uh, we thank you for that Joseph has seen how to use this website as a valuable tool to help spread the vision uh, that you've given Moses for reaching into Africa. We pray particularly for uh, the group that's coming from Uyo will have an all-day bus to get there, and we pray for the big contingent that was uh, once the office of GEM Joe's, that they will all be traveling uh, up there. We pray for safety on the road. Uh, we know that the roads are not safe, and we just pray that you put a hedge of protection around them. We pray that you begin working in the hearts already of all those in the conference for the words that are about to come to them. And we pray also for the village. We pray particularly for Moses' health, his safety, his security. We pray for him as he moves from Abuja uh, to the village and, and the roads he will have to travel, that you will put a hedge of protection around him. We pray for all those in the village who are yet to to hear the words uh, that this uh, memorial for Gloria's mother will uh, turn into a mini crusade and that it will start a revival there in that area. Father, we've been praying for, ye for years for revival in Nigeria. We know what a valuable place Africa is. In the United States, we've grown too smart for God shamedly and as as people have grown too smart for god and walked away from him we are reaping the terrible benefits of that and yet in africa people believe in god we don't have to convince them of that and so it's uh, we just need to tweak and get the truth to them so that they can grow in grace and that we pray that each one as they receive the word will be encouraged by it and that they will want to turn around and take that baton and pass it on to another person 
and encourage them and that a huge ripple effect will go out from Abuja and that uh, it will just start a huge ripple effect all through Africa as people travel that they will take the word, the, the excitement of the truth. We pray for Pastor Clem as he, as he uh, travels and the same thing for Shea and many others whose names I don't even know who uh, will be traveling. Father, we just praise you for this wonderful opportunity and just pray that it will have maximum effects. And we ask all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 I want to call on my sister Lonnie to pray for our Bible group, those who are tuning in from either Facebook or whatever means they tune in, that you pray that this God will continue to bless this group and that the word we receive will continue to be a backbone to us and uh, help us to be more equipped to glorify him that we will take the truth and live it. Not just take it, but live the truth that we take that others around us may behold the glory of God. And Sister Lonnie, please lead us in prayer on that. Our Heavenly Father, our gracious Father, we are able to approach your throne of grace that's billions and billions and billions of light years away, and we can do it instantly. The God is so awesome that we have such a relationship with you. I want to thank you for that relationship and for listening to us when we have our petitions. I want to thank you for Moses and for this group that he has, we have people that this is their church. And we have people that tune in every week and this is their life. And they listen to the YouTubes afterwards and they're studying their Bibles and their lives are changing. The, I, I smile when I think it, and it's not good how the, how the world is getting worse and worse. And here in the United States, we're voting in knuckleheads and, and weird laws. And we're t teaching things in the public schools that you can become transgender. And we're letting little kids, even I have one in the fourth grade that's changing. That uh, it's so awful, but it, we know all of these are awful, but inside we have the peace. We are the fifth gospel. We have something different that we want to share to everybody and where we're not allowed to speak of it. We can share it from our lives. I want to pray for everybody that's listening in this group that, that they remember that and that you constantly remind them use what you know, use what you've been taught in the Bible so that people are going to see the reflection of Christ. I want to pray for those that are very, very sick. We have COVID going around again. We have a horrible flu going around and we have many of the believers that are homesick. We want to pray for them and for their encouragement. And we thank you for this Bible class. All of the things that that we have Perry's know how, how we get all of these things going on. It's, it's um, amazing to me that, that we can do things like screen sharing and Facebook and, and these things can be used for evil, but it can also be used for good. And I wanna thank you for this group. It, and when Moses travels, he really does have the biggest team. It's, those of us that are back here and we're just praying for him, praying for him, praying for him. And we know that you have a will for him over there. We want to thank you for all of this. And we ask this in our Lord and Savior Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much.
And uh, I, I want to ask my brother Dave to pray for our brothers and sisters, those who persecuted the brethren, those who are going through tough time worldwide just because they call themselves Christians. They are being tortured, many killed. Pray for their family members. I, I was in, a, one time I was in, in a, a country near Thailand, Rao, the, the, the one, one man, one pastor had 12 adopted kids because their fathers have been killed because of faith. And they, that's just one story. And there are they, many more like that. Orphanages because their parents, pastors, or whoever killed for their faith. Let's pray for these people that are going through tough time. Our oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving for this beautiful day that you've given us, Father, and the opportunity to gather together through this technology that you provided, Father, to bring our day to a close with the study of your word together, Father, growing and grace, growing and understanding of your plan for us. And we come before you tonight in, in, in prayer for the persecuted of this world, Father. And we know that they are uncounted. We know that your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the only perfect person ever to walk the, war, the earth, Father, persecuted by his own people. No surprise to us, Father. And for those of us living in the United States, we know of it in theory, Father, but we don't experience it like so many. And it's our prayer, Father, that those individuals who live in areas that have government systems or belief systems that are hostile to your holy word, Father, would be receive maximum protection, Father, be emboldened by your word, Father. We pray that all have access to your word, Father. And we thank you for our local assembly for bringing our family from Tunisia, Father. An example that we can see, we can hear firsthand. Even though we don't experience it, Father, we know it is real. And Father, I come before you in prayer for the believers, for the unpersecuted. For we know, as River Moses challenged us at the beginning of our service, uh, that we are to go out each and every day, Father, and fulfill the Great Commission, Father. We are to share the word. We thank you for the opportunity to study under Reverend Moses and men like him out there who provide the truth. And Father, we pray that we, not, we may not become complacent, arrogant, haughty, and most importantly, selfish in that word. We pray that you would give us the opportunity and that we would take those opportunities every time that we have that. For we know, Father, that by spreading the word, that can multiply and that believers can encourage believers, bring strength and courage. We pray for the persecutors. We pray for those individuals who their eyes are shut. Father, we pray that their eyes be open and that they would accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as their personal Lord and Savior. We saw that clearly with Paul, probably the greatest persecutor that we know of and turn into the greatest advocate for our Lord and Savior. Father, we know that you have put us here for your praise and your glory. And we pray that we would take the continued study of your word and growing in knowledge and grace 
and we would use it the way that you intended. We ask these things by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And uh, lastly, I call on uh, my brother Ojo to pray for the churches at large that uh, we will stop playing politics and they get to business of representing our Lord Jesus Christ in his glory. For the church belongs to him and to him alone that uh, churches will stop playing politics and uh, we just unify uh, that the unity will exist just as our Lord prayed uh, that we will have one mind, one spirit in focusing in the fulfillment of the great commission for his glory. Father, we thank you for the privilege to be able to gather this evening at our various home just because of what Christ did more than 2,000 years ago that united us as one family. Father, we have heard your word. Some questions have been asked. But this hour, we want to lift up the church before you. Father, you have uh, called us out of the world that we may be your vessel through which you reach the world. We thank you for the privilege, for none of us is worthy of your calling. It's just by your grace and mercy. Father, we lift up churches around the world before you. It is true that Jesus said, I will build my church and the gate of Hades will not prevail. He's still building his church and he will continue to build his church. But the condition of the church is what we want to <clears throat> present to you this hour. If we look at the church, we will understand that uh, there are churches that are not living up to your expectations. We have pastors that are using your name for gimmick. We have all kinds of things going on in the name of Christ, which are not befitting. That's why I want to start by asking you for mercy. All you can ask for, Father, concerning your church is mercy. Remember Jesus. Remember the price he paid to purchase the church and have mercy on the church. Father, like uh, Jesus prayed in John chapter 17, that we will be one, just like as you, the Father, <coughs> him, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. You guys have one purpose. Jesus wants us to also have one purpose, which is to glorify you through him. Father, we pray that you unite the church. We will start tearing each other down, trying, trying to stop trying to outdo each other, at play each other, but rather focus on the goal, which is to honor you. Father, we pray for the faithful ones, churches where the pastors and the ministers are teaching your word undiluted. Holy Father, we just pray that you continue to strengthen them, continue to provide them with what they need in order to continue to do your work faithfully. We pray that uh, you will guide and protect them from the influence of the evil one, and they will not be <clears throat> influenced by churches that are not doing your work the right way. We also pray for those churches that are teaching error. We pray that you make a way for them to know the truth and focus on the truth. Holy Father, we pray that you continue to shield and protect your church against any attack of the evil one. For we know, just like Jesus said, that Satan come to steal, to kill and to destroy. The aim of Satan is that the church will not fulfill his purpose. But we pray, we call on the master, Jesus Christ, the builder, the holder, that he will hold his church. And if he will build his church, that the church will stand and bring glory to you this will ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Father, now I want to lift your children before your throne. Thank you for this group that you have formed. 
uh, those tuning in from Facebooks and from the Facebook and the, uh, uh, from other means and those who will listen via YouTube after the message is recorded. Father, I pray for each and every one of them and the, those who share this message on different platforms that your truth will continue to spread and make inroads. That our Savior will be glorified to the maximum. Father, I ask that uh, you will continue to build this group. Meet them at the point of their various needs. May they never lack. Supply their needs according to the riches of your grace. Amen. But I thank you so much for what you are doing and for what you are yet to do and for what you will do. And as we people will be celebrating this December, keep our eyes on you. Keep our hearts burning for your kingdom. Wherever uh, you give us, give us that satisfaction to go along with it. And Father, thank you so much. I'm so excited about what you are doing for and through us. And I pray that you will keep us steadfast in you and keep, our, keep us united in your love. Until we we'll meet again, may our hearts be burning in your love. This is my prayer, especially for those who have forgone their sleep, my brothers in uh, overseas, in Nigeria now, it's three in the morning. And uh, yet, there are people who have just let go their sleep so that they can fellowship with your children all over. Bless them immensely that they will know that indeed they have been blessed. This is my prayer tonight. I lift it up in no other name than the name that we all revere, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, our Master, our Redeemer, our Savior, our best friend, Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray. Amen. 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 You yeah, have a good uh, evening. Okay, I'm gonna hit you. Okay, bye. Until next time. <laughs>